Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, today we're talking about airbrushes, and I'm certainly not an airbrush expert by any stretch of imagination. But I can tell you what I use, what I've bought, what my experiences with them are, and maybe it helps you make a decision in the future, or you can just ignore it. That's also fine. But this is how airbrushing worked for me. And just before I start with these three, I just would like to tell you, I started out with a Chinese cheapie, like probably most of us, and you maybe, if you're just starting out, will be. And that's fine. That's perfect. I started out with a Chinese cheapie. I knocked it on. I bent the needle. I did everything we did, which a beginner can do. Uh, did wrong things. Uh, it was up to a point where it was just not, viable to fix it anymore and only then once I went through that uh, hot period of modeling then decided to get myself uh, something different better quality and started also then uh, be a bit more careful a bit more knowledgeable and with the help of the wonderful people from YouTube great guys who put up those videos and show us how to use them and how to clean them and so on and so forth I start learning how to use them properly. And we have three ones here. This is the one which I was my first one after the after my Chinese period. It is, uh, as you can see, a Badger. It's the Badger Patriot 105 with the 0.5 millimeter needle. The reason it's I don't have it here in a box because it did come in a box. It came in this, you know, plastic which cuts open your fingers when you try to open it without the proper tool. Uh, it came with a with a air pipe and uh, and an adapter because Badger has these uh, system which is different from most other airbrushes. And uh, in order to connect my other air hose, I had to attach this adapter. But it came with the airbrush, so I didn't have to buy anything, and that was it. Awesome. Then the other one we're gonna have a look at is a German-made Harder and Sternbeck. It's the Ultra. It's as they call their starter art model, beginner model, or you know, model if you want to go into more expensive airbrushes. That's the cheapest way you can go with Harder and Sternbeck. So this one is a bit more uh, expensive than the one without the kit. This one has uh, the smaller cup. It has uh, uh, the connector for the click hose, and it has an alternative. 0.4 millimeter uh, needle and uh, jet in front uh, if you want to do uh, spray paints spray jobs which need something better with uh, than the original 0.2 it normally would come with and then the third one is a Sparmax they come from Taiwan the Sparmax you can see it over here, it comes uh, as is. Um, there was a time when they all still came with a different uh, cover, needle cover, but they don't do that anymore. It's only a prop here now where the needle cover would have been. What you do not see here is a is an adapter where you can make the the two-stage airbrush, uh, one-stage airbrush in other words, you just pull back and the air is permanently flowing through. Not quite sure why one, somebody would want that. So I took it out and put it in a spare box of sorts because we don't, I don't you certainly use it. So have a look, let's have a look what these are all about. Let's just push this out of the picture and let's concentrate on this one. Sorry, you see how you hear my cat moaning, so I have to let her in, otherwise we are in permanent trouble. Just come inside. Oh my word. Such a drama queen. Here we go. Yes, I'm busy here. We can talk just now. Right, the uh, the Badger Ultra uh, came with a lid, so you don't see it on here now. But the lid was the wrong lid, didn't fit on here. It was a plastic lid which didn't fit on here. I used the lid of my old Chinese airbrush which actually fits perfectly on here. So as far as I'm concerned, it does have a lid. It should come with a lid. It didn't come with the right lid. Now it's it's a 
wonderful airbrush. It has a couple of drawbacks, which is the reason I don't use it that often anymore. The first one is, as you can see, the needle is very exposed. It doesn't have a needle color. You can see this one is also slightly damaged, but that can be rectified. Um, it doesn't have a proper needle cover, so it is exposed. That is a bit of an issue. Now let's start having a closer look. You have the needle cover. And then we open this one up here. Let's just get some help here to do this. Here we go. So you can see all the parts of the badger. What is very nice, you don't need a spanner or any of that sort. You can just take it apart, hand tight it. Very interesting. Look at that needle over here. It has this blob at the back. We'll come to that in a minute. As you see, it's a it's a solid 0.5 millimeter needle. And then we have this. This is the jet in front. Which is very nice, so no spanner needed. You don't need to take a spanner to take it apart. Just pops it out. Very nice and easy to clean. And uh, looks a decent enough, good quality airbrush. As you can see, it has been used quite a bit. Because that was in my airbrush for quite some time. And I really enjoyed it. I still do enjoy it. There are two things which I don't enjoy about it. Here we go. This one fell out. Let's put it back. There are two things which I don't enjoy about it. The one is that uh, it is a 0.5 millimeter needle and here in South Africa I'm really struggling to get a smaller uh, needle and jet combination and uh, ordering it from overseas is very forbiddingly expensive. Number two, the needle has that blob at the back which means you cannot pull the needle out in front, so you always have to pull the needle, dirty needle, out through the back. I don't like that too much. I prefer to pull the needle out through the front. But apart from these two little things, and obviously you in, in the US and in Europe, you will get all the spare parts you need. You get the smaller needle set just around the corner in your next hobby shop won't be a problem at all it is a very nice robust airbrush it has a lot of space between the trigger and the cup and and for the price i think a very very decent tool as i said my particular one i don't like the exposed needle and the, the thickness the needle so you a lot of paint comes out which for most general purpose plastic model building is not really needed. 0.3 would be more than enough. Then let's have a look at this one. This is the Harder and Sternbeck. As I said, this is the Ultra. I think you get the brush like this for 60 bucks if you like the set. It's 80 bucks. And when I say bucks, I mean yes, US dollars. So you will then convert that into your local currency. Here you can remove this cup and you can put the smaller cup on. What is interesting, this is a different system than all the other harder and Stirnbeck uh, airbrushes. They have a screw-in cup. This one gets just popped in there. <coughs> what does harder and Stirnbeck have is a very nice trigger mechanism. I really do like that. It's very stable. It's very easy. There is no fiddling. You know, you always have this little small part at the back which you have to fiddle with to get your needle in. None of that with that harder and Sternbeck. I like that a lot. And uh, let's just take it apart so you can see the parts. Here we go. The cover is also the holder for the jet in front. Now that uh, the jet is obviously nice and easy to clean. You don't need a spanner. However, that has a disadvantage and I will come to that in a minute. Then the needle in this particular case is a 0.2 millimeter needle. Here we go. You can push it out in front if you like. Not a problem. 
and Harlan Steinbeck, well, it, it is a very precise, very good toned, lovely instrument. Ah, let's just uh, have a look at the, just want to show you the trigger mechanism in a bit more detail. This is what it looks like. And this is, uh, I find that very nice, it has a ball at the end, which is very easy to find where it should be because it has a receptive here in that hollow. And then obviously it has these uh, stabilizer here at the back. So there's no little part which you have to fiddle in and try to get in the right way. This can only go in the right way, which is wonderful. I think that's a very good engineering. I like that a lot. I'll just screw it in, ready to rock and roll. So that's very nice. Now let's come to this. I said I, I don't like this. I'll tell you why I don't like this. The Ultra only comes with this particular needle cover. Here we go. There you can look at it. It is has a normal round needle cover and it has these holes on the side. Now this needle cover clocks up very, very fast. And when it clocks up, you cannot just unscrew it and clean it quickly because when you unscrew it, you unscrew the whole assembly. Because then you also unscrew this and then your needle is open and open for damage. So that is not very nice. You get a different needle cover, which you can buy from Harbour and Sternbeck for quite a lot of money. I think I saw it for 28 or $32. So that's a lot of money just for a tip. And uh, <clears throat> that is certainly one of the weak points in order to clean this. What I do, and I'm certainly not recommending it, but what I do is when I have work with it on bigger projects. Let me just get up and get one of those. I pull the needle back without pressing the air and then just clean it out like that. But yeah, that's that's certainly not ideal. It's not what you want. And uh, it certainly would be better if uh, the needle cover would either be the forked needle cover, which a lot of the other hard and Steinbeck have, or if you could remove it. So no re-engineering, I obviously won't suggest that. So in other words, just give us the proper needle cover, hard and Steinbeck. And let's put the needle in here. There we go. The other beef I have with this airbrush, it didn't come with a lid. It's a $60 airbrush. It's apparently a beginner's airbrush or airbrush for the guy who starts out with airbrushing. Hard and Zurich, normally very expensive, wanted to get into the cheap market. And the corners they cut is the needle cover and no lid. You can buy the lid, also very expensive. And uh, come on, Hard and Steinbeck. Throw in a lid, even if it's only a plastic lid, just give us a lid. I didn't, I don't think it would have been, you know, too much. So that's a bit of a, I don't like that too much. So I never, I never fill it up more than half because otherwise it will make a mess. So that's uh, one of the two things I don't like. It doesn't have a lid and I don't like that the needle cover clocks up extremely quickly and uh, that you have to clean it all the time. The only way to do it is uh, the method I just showed you, or just to disassemble the airbrush every time. Not ideal, but otherwise, oh boy, is it nice to work with. It's precise to the touch. It's beautifully soft. It has long travel way to the ears if you would like to, you know, even regulate your airflow. That, I mean, it is a beautifully manufactured tool. And if you like me, you're a sucker for that then you just love it. Obviously, the other Harder and Sternbergs uh, are even better engineered and, and even fancier. But it's not something which is in my price league at the moment. And uh, this one certainly has a similar functionality than the others. And if I get to Germany next year, I might just get myself the other cover. 
here uh, in, in a hobby shop and uh, then it will be fully and easy functional like any other airbrush so here you go that was the harder and steel bag. and last but not least when i bought that a couple of months ago is the Sparmex. i heard about them or read about them in some other forum and people actually said it's it's not a bad brush for the price at all and uh, yeah i had that problem with the ultra where i was a bit frustrated that i had to clean it every two minutes that it didn't have a lid uh, oh yeah so i i got myself this one it comes in this case beautiful case very good well protected it comes with a spanner oh yeah this is the that part we were talking about earlier and look at that comes with the lid isn't that great here we go so that's the sparmax max 3 and uh, uh the three gives it away it's an 0.3 millimeter needle you also get the sparmax max 4 um, which obviously, yep, you guessed it, it would be an 0.4 milli millimeter needle. Now let's have a look at it a little bit closer. Um, I took the lid off, otherwise it just falls off. It has uh, a separate needle cover, which is uh, this one here. Here you go. And it doesn't have holes on the side, so it's very smooth, so it doesn't clog up very quickly. And even if it should sooner or later clog up, you can just unscrew it, clean it, and screw it back on. Then uh, let's go one step further and unscrew this. That is the normal needle cover as we know it from most airbrushes here. Then this is the jet in front where the needle comes out. Now that is the normal classic jet which you have to unscrew with a spanner that's the disadvantage of this one um, however so far I haven't done it I normally you know brush I don't have, I hardly ever brush longer than half an hour 45 minutes if that at all clean it clean it between colors clean it properly uh, afterwards and I never had to take it out never had to unscrew it and uh, it's working fine no problem so it is taken apart like uh, here. That mechanism is obviously the same as with any other airbrush. Take out the 0.3 milliliter millimeter needle. It has this. Uh, it has a mechanism similar to the Ultra and most other airbrushes. Let's see if I can get the light here. With that little saddle over here which sits behind the trigger and this is the one i was talking about which is always so fiddly to get in the right way in this particular case when you take it apart this saddle is actually connected to this piece so you take it out as one piece and you put it back as one piece so it is slightly easier to assemble and disassemble than most other airbrushes including the patriot but apart from that I must admit, I have used this airbrush now last month and a half, maybe. And it is my absolute go-to airbrush. It works perfectly. The parts are precise. Trigger mechanism is nice. Very nice. Then the functionality of the tool is nice. It looks nice. It doesn't look ratted. And I really used it. I mean, I've used it a lot. Uh, and it is easy to assemble and especially easy to clean and I think that's one of the most important parts in airbrushing for me I don't want to have uh, an airbrush which has this and that and that functionality oh by the way it has this one here at the back where you can actually put a stop to your to the trigger so that only a certain amount of paint comes out um, if you are if you don't want to freehand it you can say all right I, I you know can restrict it to a certain amount uh, that lever goes back but otherwise this airbrush works it just works it's just a, a wonderful working airbrush it does exactly what an airbrush should do for me it is not fancy but it is well made well produced and it is 
has a very acceptable price and uh, if you're looking for after you have done done if you've been done with your Chinese airbrushes and once you have destroyed them and bent the needles and did everything else to them and now come to a point where you have uh, your first tries with airbrushing are over and you move on to the next step and you want to have an airbrush which just works very nicely and is easy to clean this is the one it is complete with everything it uh, comes with a lid it comes with a very nice box over here where it is really well protected so if you get a chip from somewhere you will know it will be perfectly fine you could even if you want to hang it on the wall because it's so tight fitting in here it would never fall out so this is a wonderful airbrush and actually at the moment i must say my favorite having said that the other two are very nice airbrushes there's nothing wrong with them the patriot if i would get an 0.3 millimeter set for it I will probably use it a bit more than what I use it now. Now it's really for rough work. Uh, I guess I could use it for dioramas and stuff like that, which I haven't done yet. Um, this is this one. And then the Ultra, very nice, precise airbrush. Clocks up a bit fast for me. And it doesn't have a lid. And, uh, but both qualitative, very good, very easy to handle airbrushes I mean this one is you could probably throw against the wall apart from the missing needle cover and nothing would happen to it it just feels it just has that stance about it that quality about it of robustness and you can see I've, I've used this one quite heavily um, this one feels very well engineered and this one just feels like a solid airbrush which uh, does every job you throw at it and so far it has it is really it is my go-to airbrush for most jobs small or big love it love it love it well thanks very very much for having a look ladies and gentlemen that's all i wanted to do tell you about the airbrushes i use at the moment what i think about that also probably got an idea what i look for in an airbrush easy to use easy to clean no fuss just do the job that's all i want in an airbrush don't care how fancy it looks just care how good it works. Thanks very much for watching and you guys have a wonderful evening. Cheers.